differentials. You can think of differentials as uh, a very small number, right? So differential of x is dx, differential of y is dy. So I'll give you the geometric interpretation of differentials. Now, why am I doing this? This is going to be useful in the micro course. So I'm only doing that much of maths, which is required in the micro course, just, just a bit of it, right? So let us say you have the function like this. So you have uh, the function, let's say like this, right? And here you have x and you have fx out here. This is f of x. And let's say x is increased by delta x. So So the new x is going to be x plus delta x and the corresponding y is going to be f of x plus delta x like this. Fair enough. Okay. Now, if I want to, if I just draw the tangent at this particular point, right? If I want to draw the tangent at this point, so I have drawn the tangent at x of x, right? I have drawn the tangent at x of x, fair enough. And if I want to find out the slope of this tangent, so what is the way out? So tuck tuck, 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 this I need to find out and I need to find out this area. But you remember, no? I think we have done this in the budget line wala thing also. So you have the function like this. So you have like this. And if I want to find out the slope of this line, right? At this particular point. So this is the change in y upon change in x. That is the way you find out. We have also done these things. So if I want to find out the slope of the line between these two points, that is change in y upon change in x. This is the way you find out. So here also, this is the change in x. This is what your uh, dx is. And this entire thing is what dy. This entire thing. This thing is dx. This is this is what dy is. But the change in x is given by delta x. And the change in y is given by delta y beta. Yeah. So this dy is dx is equal to delta x, but dy is not necessarily equal to delta y. dy is not necessarily equal to delta y. So yes, dx is equal to delta x, right? But uh, you can only say that dy is approximately equal to delta y. So there is this area, this thing, which is extra in dy, which is not in delta y. That is the point which I want to make. That is the point which I want to make. So you have the function like, uh, let's say, um, you have the function like y is equal to what? x square. So we can write, we can write dy by dx as 2x. So supposedly, and 2x is nothing but the slope of this line. And if I know the change in x, if I know the slope, then I can find out the change in y. I can do that. And this 2x is nothing but the slope, f dash x. So the basic point which I want to make out here is that is this dy is basically your f dash x into dx. dy is 
what the f dash x into dx. That is what the differential is. So suppose you have the function y is equal to fx is a differentiable function and delta x is representing the arbitrary uh, increment in x. arbitrary increment in x, right? So f dash x into delta x, that is nothing but the differential of y. Differential of y. And because delta x is equal to dx, so this differential could be written as f dash x into dx. So differential of y is dy, differential of x is dx. And how do you write the differential of y? dy as f dash x into dx. So you can also write this as dy by dx equals to f dash x. So dy by dx is the derivative of uh, the function. And it is also the ratio of differentials. So this is the derivative of the function. And this is also the ratio of differentials. So keep this thing in head. Uh, so now supposedly if you have the function like this, instead of the one variable function, you have the multiple variable function f of x1, x2. So when you have y is equal to f of x and if x has been increased, so the change in y is given by f dash x into delta x, right? The differential in y is given by f dash x into delta x. Now supposedly if you have the y which is dependent upon x1 and x2 and the agent is trying to increase only x1 keeping x2 as constant. So here you have to use the concept of partial derivative because partial derivative is, is what? That is the change in y due to the change in x keeping all other independent variables constant. So when only x1 is changing and x2 is constant, so the change in y is given by, so in that case, change in y is given by del f by del x1 dx1. Peter, this is exactly like this, now. This is exactly like this. So this could be written as f1 dx1. Just say you have written dy is equal to f dash x dx for the single variable case. For the multiple variable, you write the partial derivatives. dy equals to del f by del x1 dx1, that is f1 dx1. And if not only x1, but x2 is also changed. So the change in y is going to come from the change in x1 and from the change in x2. So the change in x1 is del f by del x1 into dx1. Change in x2, change in y due to x2 is given by del f by del x2 into dx2. And you have to combine these two changes, right? So if all x's, please write, if all x's, are varied by small amount. The total effect on y will be the sum of effects as shown above. That means the differential in y it could be written as del f by del x1 into dx1. That is the change in y due to the change in x1 plus change in y due to the change in x2. So the only thing which, I mean, I told you everything beforehand was that why are we using this? From where this thing is coming, dy equals to f dash x dx. 
and then you have taken this concept further to the to, to the multiple variable case so the total change in y is coming from the change in x1 and change in x2 and then you can also this is the first order differential so you can also write the second order differential and this is going to be useful when we will be doing the maximization of the multiple variable case so second order derivative second order derivative so let's say you have z is equal to f of x by both simple eh? please have a look at this how do you write the differential in z the change in z due to change in x that is given by del f by del x into dx plus change in z due to the change in y that is f y d y that is del f by del y into d y now if i want to find out the change in dz also right change in dz so i need to differentiate this thing the fx derivative of this plus derivative of this so that is what right acha beta your when you find out del f by del x or del f by del y that is not necessarily the function of only x or only y that also could be the function of x and y both right so when you differentiate this uh, that is so what i am trying to say is you have the function like this when you find out del f by del x okay, that itself could be the function of x and y both that is not necessarily true that fx is the function of x only it can be both x and y similarly when you write fy that is the function of both x and y uh, so if i want to differentiate acha if i want to differentiate this guy then how do you do this uh, then how do you do this del f x by del x into dx plus del fx by del y into dy you write it like this so that is nothing but fxx because this is the change in the partial derivative of x due to x this is the change in the partial derivative of x due to y right so i can write this thing here f x x dx plus f y y dy into dx similarly when you differentiate f y now f y itself also is the function of both x and y so how f y is changing as x is changing how f y is changing as y is changing so that is what f y x dx plus f y y dy you write it like this plus f y x dx plus have i written it right this is fx y dy so sorry this is fx y dy thanks and this is fy y dy into dy but beta by young's theorem you know fx y is equal to f of uh, f y x so once you calculate this this becomes what f x x x square plus f y y d y square 
plus but beta fx y is equal to fy x na young's theorem so you have what is the term fx y dx dy plus f, in place of fy x you can write fx y so plus fx y dx dy so that is 2 fx y dx dy right so this is d to z this is the second order derivative and this is going to be useful when you will be uh, finding out the second order conditions for maxima or minima so tomorrow i'll take you into how do you find out the maximization of functions of more than one variable you have seen the maximization of function of one variable now the maximization of function of more than one variable but there is a caveat this is not a detailed video this is just telling only that much of maths which is required in the microeconomics course that is it right so you should know from where uh, things are coming so that is the reason i'm just creating these videos right thank you beta